So Meyer, Myers-Briggs test is basically a personality test that focuses on four different areas. You know, your level of extroversion, uh, if you're more of a thinker, a feeler, uh, if you're also more of a, um, a analyst, or are you more of just, you know, kind of a perspective kind of person, more philosophical in that sense this test or you know personality test sometimes can help you match with a a partner a correct partner in in terms of romantic relationship the uh it says sensation intuition feeling and thinking that's bringing back some memories because i took it a long time ago my undergrad and it was created by carl Jung, psychiatrist an early Ooh. psychiatrist who was uh more on the leaning towards psychoanalytical which is sigmund freud when he started that, but Carl Jung is very interesting. Um, Jordan Peterson talks about him a lot. Of, everyone knows that who listens to him. Uh, Carl Jung is, I find him fascinating. I didn't find him as fascinating until I heard Jordan Peterson get more into it. And now I'm wanting to learn more about him. And I was reading one of his books it's called The Red Book, not to get too far off talk of it, just briefly like mm-hmm. The Red Book. Carl Jung talks about like archetypes and symbols, the collective unconscious, where all these symbols are stored across thousands of years of generations and passed down through stories and move, now movies. Um, but yeah, it's interesting how he's tried to categorize all the symbols that humanity creates to understand the world. And so, so it kind of makes sense that he creates this personality test with um, looks like Isabel Briggs Myers. Yeah. To, to try to figure out our personality and <laughs> like, Maybe it's somewhat symbolic when he was putting it together, you know, like sensation, intuition, feeling, thinking. One of the things that I was finding out uh, based on, you know, the research that, that, you know, different websites had created was that most of the time, or, or at least part of the time, a lot of the personalities that would match would tend to be opposites of each other. Of course, you know, who wants to be living with somebody that is the same person that just kind of blows away the the fact that you know there could be anything interesting or anything to to learn from anything to show from a different perspective right uh if we both see the world the same way then what am i gonna learn i i already know that personally right and so what what do you think about that steel like is is that something that that that, uh any any psychologist has mentioned or 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 anything that that kind of catches your attention yeah, I don't know if any psychologist has mentioned this off the top of my head, but I do know that like it makes sense when you think about it because it makes sense when you apply it to personality, I think, in some way. Now, like one thing that makes sense to me immediately, and then jumping into psychology after that is immediately, I think, introversion and extroversion from the Myers Briggs. It makes sense that an introvert would be maybe enjoying their company more of an extrovert because the extrovert naturally fills the silence that an introvert brings. Not to say the introverts are always silent, but you know, when the introvert is less likely to talk, the extrovert's gonna start the conversation and keep it going. Whereas the introvert, if there's an introvert and an introvert, like you were mentioning before this was, you know, if there's two introverts, they're not gonna, they may not keep the conversation going. It might fall flat and it might, might stop, you know, prematurely. Whereas if there's two extroverts, what you were saying is, right. Like, well, they might drain each other out yeah, yeah by constantly just talking yeah, talking to each other training each other's energy even though it's interesting because extroverts get energy from other people introverts it's the opposite mm-hmm. they get drained by other people so that also brings in the question of what the extrovert and, and it's also because it, it's very interesting in the in the personality test there's different levels of extroversion uh different personalities or different combinations of personalities because there's like four sections and the combinations, depending on the combination, it goes um, to reflect different levels of introversion or extroversion. One of the things that that I noticed also, you know, with my girlfriend right now is that I was doing a personality test uh, to see what personality um, best fit, you know, with my potential partner or, or um, you know, what would be the personality that most fit with my Myers-Briggs test. <laughs> and she happens to have the personality that most matches my uh oh, so my sense. personality which is pretty crazy right like 
uh, because it said that her personality itself is very rare. Um, I think hers is INFJ. Uh, we match in the N and the F, <clears throat> which the F, I think it's the feeler. We were both feelers. We feel compassion for other people um, because some people tend to be more analytical. And then we also match <clears throat> in the N, which I don't know what specifically that was. It's almost as if we're kind of predetermined to find specific people that match our personality or, you know, or at least that balance out our personality. Because when we talk about matching, we automatically think of finding someone that's completely like us, right? Like does the same things and, and stuff like that. But I think in for in order to to be, you know, a, an actual connection, not just a compatibility aspect, there needs to be something more than that. It's the mixture, the combination of personalities, the combination of, you know, lifestyles, the combination of beliefs. Yeah, you pointed out that even though you and your girlfriend were slightly opposite on some things, there was at least, I think, two things you pointed out that you were the same or at least very, very similar on. So it's not completely the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's, and maybe it's not fair to say it's the the opposite, but maybe it's more fair to say, um, well, balances. Like balancing, yeah, maybe it's balancing. Uh, like some of it's some differences, and then some similarities, just enough. Because you know, if you want to go to psychology, social psychology says like uh, people who are similar to each other, the more similar they are, maybe not perfectly, but similarities tend to attract more than people who are not similar to each other but just in every mm -hmm. almost everything friendships uh relationships like in terms of physical appearance like people who are similar in appearance be more likely to sit next to each other to talk to each other you know like even if you you pick up on because you know this as a communications or both communication majors nonverbals doesn't just mean moving around it means the clothing we wear so yeah you know, someone wearing, uh, I don't know, a baseball cap with their favorite Like a hot pink or something. Yeah, like or like their favorite basketball team, right? And they see someone else wearing their favorite basketball team shirt. Mm. They're more likely yeah. to sit next to each other than people who, than someone who's just wearing no hat at all and they're just wearing a t-shirt, you know, because it's similar is kind of attractive. Yeah, that, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I think, you know, that goes to show that, you know, because like... Yeah.